Okay, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> My name is Manuel Holtgrebe, and I'm, um, well, I'm a trained uh, computer scientist, then did a PhD in bioinformatics. Um, and now I'm working in the core unit of, of bioinformatics at uh, Berlin Institute of Health. And I will talk about our use of um, yeah, OpenStack and OpenStack Ironic for our HPC system that we are maintaining. Um, so quickly as the agenda, um, I will go over a bit of background of the Institute. So who are we and what is what are things used to? Um, our use case, a little bit of, of history, uh, what happened until we, we got here. Um, then our current setup um, that we did with the help of the of Ironic and the Ironic community, of course, um, our plans for the futures. And then I was asked to um, present on some challenges that we had. Um, so maybe maybe some, so, yeah, maybe they can be resolved with one sentence or maybe um, you, people just nod and say, okay, everybody knows this. Is, it will be between them, um, these extremes. So um, first of all, I hope this isn't too boring for you. So I'm working at um, Coyon and Bioinformatics and we are about 12 people mostly people doing data analysis, building data pipelines, tools, and we are working um, in scientific collaborations with uh, people at um, Charité and other academic institutions in the yeah, life science um, health space. So we are analyzing um, a lot of um, yeah, molecular data of various forms and uh, the aim of, uh, so QB is, or well, the core unit bioinformatics is part of the Berlin Institute of Health, Institute of Health, which is itself a part of um, the Charité University Hospital in Berlin. And the aim of BIH um, explicitly is to make translations. So bring uh, problems from the bedside to the bench side, um, get some insights, um, eventually um, yeah, improve diagnostics on the bedside, improve um, therapeutic products on the bedside. And um, it's, uh, you, you could argue that Charité is doing this anyway, but there's this particular focus of the BIH, which is a, which is a federal research institute. Um, so Charité is a huge place. So there's about 25,000 people working here um, from uh, doctors, students, uh, janitors, um, everything you have in a hospital, researchers, there's about, the faculties has a size of about 2,000 people. And uh, yeah, we are a very small group and um, we cater to, um, to ourselves and then um, other groups um, such as the virology. So for example, I don't know if you German speaking um, part of the world, um, you might have seen Christian Drosten, who's the head of Charité Virology, and their group are working on our system. So, Ironic is helping fight COVID, yay. Um, and one part that is also important, we are independent of um, Charité Central IT, and um, we are, of course, working together with them and interfacing with them, And uh, but it's not like, um, I'm not showing the main deployment of IT using Ironic at Charité, it's really our group, which is 12 people, and then we cater to maybe um, 200 or more people. So it's it's sizable, but it's not all of Charité. Um, yes, so that should be enough. Otherwise, feel free to ask questions later on. Um, so what is our use case? We have an HPC system of about 250 CPU nodes of variant ages, so some are five years old, some are from last year, um, we have seven GPU units with four GPUs each, so quite some punch compute-wise, but it's not the largest deployment, of course. Um, we have an old uh, two petabyte uh, GPFS apply, uh, appliance that will go end of life um, this year, and we're currently um, yeah, introducing another like fast storage, tier one storage, as we call it, um, based on all VM. NVMe, which will be based on CFFS, and we um, have had some tier two storage, so for just archiving stuff, also based on CFFS, but they're on spinning disks. And um, we, by now, well, not all of these hosts have been set up with um, Ironic um, yet, but most of them. And then there's about 20 virtual machines to support the um, HPC operations, including the Slurm server, database server, some virtual machines for logging in, all of these these things. Um, and then um, our group also maintains a couple of um, yeah, server installations for 
data exploration, visualization tools, um, data, some data management software that we develop also um, by ourselves. And um, there's yeah, a couple of say non-HPC, just uh, virtual machines that sit there and serve some, some web servers as things go these days. So, and um, historically, um, we started out with the open source version of Grid Engine and deployed um, everything with our own um, yeah, DHCP server. And then we had our own uh, TFTP server and all of these kind of things. At some point, we switched over to XCAT, which worked, worked pretty well. But um, we, we, yeah, there was the, say, impedance mismatch. Virtual machines were managed by software called or we had a software called Proxmox and um, migrating this to OpenStack really um, gave us a yeah, coherent view on the system and suddenly managing bare metal and virtual machines is, is very similar, which is really good and great and um, helpful, um, yeah, sa saving us time. Um, and the other things, yeah, I copied a bit of the, the logos on the, on the lower left here from another presentation. So, um, yeah, we, we are moving also away from uh, commercial software to more um, open source based system. Um, on the lower right, you can see uh, a rendering of uh, what we have in our data center, or data centers, I have to say. And I think I saw an etherpad um, of the ironic um, meeting, uh, which, which uh, DSIM software is used. So we're using Netbox and if, if you know it, great. If you don't know it, have a look. It's, it's good software. So if you're looking for something um, that, that can be useful and it can give you these, these renderings. So it's, it's, it's um, more or less 10 racks full of hardware that we have and we're managing it mostly with Ironic. And if we don't, we, we're planning to. Um, okay, so um, roughly the network layout, um, this can be quick. So for the HPC network on the left-hand side, there is something like that, I would say an internal public network. So it's private IP4 addresses. And um, then there's an internal um, private network also um, IP4 addresses and um, yeah, the, the head node, so to say, where people log in or transmit data through, or we also have a um, yeah, graphical user interface portal. They're connected to both networks. And then we have um, all of the GPU and CPU machines only connect to the private network. Um, so this is one OpenStack installation overall. And on the right-hand side, we also now manage uh, the yeah, four physical servers um, in the DMZ uh, with ironic more or less, so we installed it with Kyobi, which uses Bfrost, which then is ironic. Um, and, and there's a couple of um, virtual machines there and um, also two networks, but not so much an internal, external one, but rather one for things that are connected directly, virtual machines directly to the internet or to the DMZ. And then there is, um, we have something like a, a gateway node with an um, HTTP reverse proxy in the case that we need to proxy through to internal networks such as um, yeah, S3 from our Ceph system, for example. Um, so what do we use? Um, so we um, use the uh, Collar and Kyobi projects for, um, yeah, for, for bootstrapping the OpenStack uh, Kyobi and then Collar for deploying OpenStack and then um, also our um, Ceph storage servers are um, deployed directly with the Bfrost inside of Kyobi. And um, from then on, you have an OpenStack server, as, as you know better than me. And then we bootstrapped everything else um, with, with Nova, or, um, and then the, um, I think it's a libvirt dri driver and um, ironic for the bare metal nodes. Um, so all of our HPC compute nodes are managed now with it, um, all of the supporting uh, virtual machines that we have. And um, we have a handful of what I call here user virtual machines. So there are some things that are not HPC, but QBs, so these data exploration um, um, yeah, services that I mentioned earlier. And there's also one virtual machine where we host it for, for another group where they run a web server um, for their internal use. Um, yeah, there was, um, we had some, you remember, it's, I will go back one slide, it's a bit confusing, but so um, on the public network, um, oh wait, let me put it differently. As long as you deploy um, things on the internal network, that works very well um, with the um, yeah, standard Kyobi setup. 
but if you want to deploy bare metal on a second network, then you cannot use flat networking anymore. I think, I hope that is, I, I expressed that correctly. It's my understanding and I ask in the uh, Kyobi or in the caller chat and they confirmed it. And um, so I would actually now need to switch to a neutral networking for uh, my bare metal deployment and I haven't figured out how to do that yet. And um, so um, I had to, yeah, have two set bare metal servers on the internal public network that um, I set up um, by hand. Um, so we are, we've deployed everything um, as um, Rocky Linux, um, except of course, or more or less of course, but but the um, color Docker images that we're using are just the stock color images. And that's, I think, uh, sent to a stream. Um, what we do with Ironic is installing the more or less stock Rocky images. So all of our um, bare metal servers and actually also the virtual machines are installed, um, just the, the bare operating system. And then we use Ansible to um, yeah, give them their roles to be either compute nodes or um, login nodes or Slurm controllers and all of these, these things. So we only have one image and we don't have, let's, I don't know, you could criticize this as it's not cloudy because you don't just deploy the image and there goes your application and you have uh, one image for each role and we're still using uh, yum update to update the packages. Um, but um, it, it works quite well for us. So we were able to um, replace our previous deployment using a uh, hind role TFTP service and THCP um, and, 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 and um, Pixie boot service that we set up. And then later on, we replace this with XCAT. And then from this thinking, we now replace that with OpenStack. And um, certainly there are things um, or steps that we could take to be more bare metal cloud, but right now it works quite well for us. And um, let's see how we can simplify our um, workflows um, in the future, um, yeah, becoming more cloudy in a way. Um, and then also, which, which um, yeah, I think is worth mentioning, we don't give our users access to OpenStack. So they don't deploy their own bare metal um, servers, although that, that could be done. Um, Certainly, but it's more, we have a classic HPC system that has uh, 250 plus nodes and people log into login nodes and then can access the other nodes with um, the Slurm um, yeah, scheduler or workload manager. So this, this is our, our use case. It's not that we give people, people don't have OpenStack workflows, they have classic HPC Slurm workflows or workloads. Um, future plans, yes, as I said, um, we want to look um, into um, deploying our bare metal instances um, with more specific um, images to um, yeah, also reduce the time we spend out um, rolling out with um, Ansible. And then there's of course the advantages of having immutable uh, machines and you just um, redeploy them. But um, for now, um, we're happy with, with where we are. Um, one challenge that I would see there, but I might also understand, not understand it correctly enough. So we're using GPFS currently for our storage. And to the best of my understanding, you have to, um, like with GPFS, you have a, some storage servers which form a cluster. And then each of the clients also has to join the cluster. So you not just mount something from a client that is a, is a server, but you have to join the cluster. And this is um, a manual step. And you also cannot do this from 100 nodes at the same time because there's locking taking place. So I would know how to solve that. But um, it, it may not be that important because we're sunsetting our um, GPFS instance by the end of the year anyway. Um, another thing that um, I think will improve the deployment is um, yeah, using um, OpenStack Barbican um, for secrets uh, management. But um, yeah, we cross the bridge when we get there and um, get towards um, a more image-based deployment rather than an Ansible-based deployment. Um, as I men mentioned earlier, yeah, we really want to have Newton for HPC networks. Um, and um, we, we are very, 
we are very use case driven. So if we need something, we invest time learning how to do it. And maybe if there's a third and fourth and fifth server on the public network that we need, um, we will address this because right now um, it works quite well. And I don't expect to touch that these two servers um, for quite some time. Um, then, yeah, there's a couple of small patches that I want to um, do for Kyobi. So, for example, um, spanning tree um, protocol on the on the virtual bridges that would be good to have, and uh, which it currently cannot it does not support out of the box, but which probably would be a, a simple patch. But let's see when I find the time to do that. Um, hopefully soon, and um, also. At least, so we deployed with KOB Xena and there one had to patch a Kyobi a bit, the Ansible playbooks inside of Kyobi. So you could um, use a custom base image for your um, OpenStack um, host. So this is not for the ironic Nova deployed hosts, but for the um, OpenStack host that you deploy with Kyobi via Bfrost. Um, yeah, then there's designate, which might be useful for DNS, um, but I have to look into the features and limitations. Right now we're maintaining um, a DNS server manually um, and roll that out um, with, uh, with Ansible. And then I need to teach um, OpStack to um, more of my um, colleagues. And um, we found it a bit challenging to find, um, say, suitable training and books for um, OpenStack Ironic because everything that I found so far is, um, yeah, how to get started with um, OpenStack. And then when it starts to get interesting, uh, the tutorial or the book stops. Um, but I might also, or they are very high level and not so much hands-on, but my experience with OpenStack and also Ironic is that you need working experience and probably the best way would be uh, to, to work in an organization that already um, uses it and then learn it. But um, yeah, I, was, I, I had to learn by myself. The um, OpenStack community was very helpful and there is a lot of documentation and the manuals are great. It's just, um, I sometimes feel, at least I couldn't find it. There is, there is something missing or there was something missing for me to connect the dots. The dots were all there, but some connections were missing. Um, but but uh, yeah, I might just be have been missing the things, um, and uh, it's it's re it was a really good experience um, using OpenStack. It was just um, uh, yeah hard to learn. I found so what what kind of technical challenges um, now coming to the challenges that we have. So first of all. Um, yeah, we had all of these servers um, bought. Um, it's also, I don't want to um, make advertisement for them, but it's all Dell um, hardware. So at least um, only one, um, one out of band management uh, that we had. And um, it's, it's quite okay from Dell. Different versions still, but um, yeah, we somehow had to make uh, homogeneous BIOS or UEFI settings um, to, um, yeah, simplify deployment. And uh, there were come some things that we had to adjust for use with Ironic that we didn't have to use before, but but yeah, we figured all of that out and cleaned that up, which is good in itself. Um, and then we had to, yeah, I called this here impedance mismatch HPC versus cloud. Um, so a lot of that I think is of the mindset, people coming from classic HPC to just except that um, you deploy, if you deploy, uh, say, 20, 20 ironic machines, machines 1 to 20, they randomly go to your um, bare metal um, host. So you just have to accept that this is the way cloud works. Um, but uh, yeah, one thing that we had, or what at least that I faced um, when having cloud-ready images is that they had this um, net interface names uh, set to, to, to false by default. And um, we are using eight um, OpenStack hosts there where the virtual machines run and they come from different generations. And um, it turned out that the ETH0 to ETH N setting was not as stable across reboots at, as I would have expected. So um, yeah, I had to work around this a bit, but again, this is um, something um, you can use different images and you just have to build these images. And then we have a um, 
link aggregation everywhere. So all of our network is either um, dual 10 gigabit or dual 25 gigabit based. And, but we don't have dedicated in-band management. Um, it's really coming from this HPC part of the world where you have a um, out-of-band management and then there is a compute. And uh, in a cloud world, I now understand it's more common to have in-band and out-of-band um, yeah, on the same port, um, which, is, which is also fine. And then um, you might have just um, one non-redundant um, network connection. And where this came in as problematic was that you have to get the switch settings for link aggregation just right. So for Dell, um, it's, it's, it's documented in the, um, in the ironic um, documentation. You just have to find out or figure out that the problem is, is, uh, is on your end and it's well documented in ironic, but you have to configure the um, link aggregation uh, port channels in, in the Dell switches that we have to passive and not active. So the server initiates the um, creation of the bond and not the, the switch. So we figured that out and we solved it and now things are working nicely. Um, and then I would say another category of technical challenges um, was that, yeah, building images is not trivial. So thanks a lot, Anna, for helping <laughs> me there to, um, and, and also um, Julia for, um, yeah, using the disk image builder of OpenStack. And yeah, it's just not, it's just not trivial. I tripped over a couple of places um, and, and just things that are hard. And then one thing where I was building the images on my Ubuntu workstation, but um, the disk image builder assumes that I think you use the same uh, distribution. So, well, I got all over all of these technical challenges. Um, after all, it's great. It's open source and you can introspect everything and look at the source code and see what's really happening. So that was really good. And um, yeah, some things are really hard. Like, yeah, Kyobi sits on top of Colors, which sits both sit on top of Ansible. And uh, now you need to figure out how do you configure a particular thing. And some things, maybe you cannot configure them, but that was also quite challenging. But um, also the um, Collar and Kyobi communities were really helpful here. Um, but on the other hand, it's, um, yeah, you really, if, if somebody is, is seeing this and wants to do their um, bare metal deployment with, um, with, with OpenStack Ironic, you really have to go to IRC and and like of course yeah I, I always try to resolve issues by my, myself but I found it hard to do everything on my own so that was um, I got lost on the way um, and then yeah of course everybody who working with hardware knows rebooting these enterprise servers takes ages and it's really frustrating um, getting something to Pixie boot for the first time it's it's also really frustrating but then of course you have a hundred of the same machines so once we resolve it for one you can Pixie boot a hundred and um, it's really hard to debug things until you get a prompt and can introspect things but again you can introspect everything um, and once I figured out how to get a root prompt um, for on one of these um, ironic Python agent um, yeah mach um, boots um, I could figure out almost all of my problems very quickly. So everything went quite well. And then the non-technical challenges. Yeah, I'm, you know, these, these for, uh, for the impatient guides, I'm the impatient users. Um, and this is really my, my problem when doing these IT things because um, my, my job description says, yeah, I'm a, I'm a scientist. And while I now, a lot of the general things, and by now I have quite some experience with the with the technical things. It's um, yeah. In software engineering, they say um, um, yeah, hours of planning can no no. Weeks of coding can save hours of planning, and here it's the same way. Sometimes it would have been useful to just uh, take the time and read the manual, and I didn't do that, so um, that was what my failure. And um, then yeah. You, also, it's, it's quite easy to have some quick success. Um, and then you, 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 you might build some um, technical um, depth. So it should not be depth, but depth. So um, yeah, so that, that was my bad. And um, also, yeah, I, you know, I had set up the system with, with our hand-rolled uh, Pixie booting uh, infrastructure and also with XCAT, and that was relatively straightforward and with OpenStack. 
it's a huge software and you don't know how, where things fit and I had no prior experience with it. I figured it out in the end and documentation is there and it's great, but it's just like, yeah, going from, okay, I think I know what I'm doing to really, I have no idea what I'm doing and okay, let's, let's try to do first things first and figure out how, how things, how things go. And um, actually first thing that I found a bit hard was uh, what's the preferred way of bootstrapping things. I understand there's at least using KOB and Collar versus um, this triple O project. And um, hopefully I picked the right approach by KOB Collar because that was what people were referring to as yeah, good deployments for um, HPC. And um, yes, OpenStack is a big project. So it, it's tough to learn, tough to know in the beginning what goes where and what you need and um, where to look. And um, well, it just takes time to learn, I guess. And um, and as I said, documentation, yeah, I found some book by this, this I think it's O'Reilly self-publishing this, this pack thing. And some books are quite good and some are more or less just three blog posts. You have sometimes a feeling, so it's easy to get started, but it's um, hard to become an expert, I would say, with, with OpenStack. There's this um, universe from nothing of Kyobi from this um, Stack HPC company. And without that, I would have been completely lost. So this was extremely helpful. But that again, then making the step from having everything in a virtual machine to real hardware, I found that challenging. But again, the community was very helpful. So thanks a lot for that. And in the end, I succeeded. So yay. Um, yes, as I said, what is good? So really the um, ISC chats are really great. I love that everything's open source. You can look into everything. Um, you see that people had similar problems as me and everything is introspectable and you can get uh, prompts everywhere and there's a lot of log files. And once you figured out how to improve the, uh, increase the, increase the log verbosity um, with the KUB and color deployment, you can see everything. It's, it's, it's really, really great. Um, I can deploy everything with Docker. So I don't, um, you don't have these, uh, yeah, some lost installation files lying around. So that's really great. Um, the integration with Ceph, um, both for um, block storage and um, file system is really great. Um, the Horizon user interface, I found this very useful and also instructive to discover things. And of course, the command line interface, that's also really helpful for scripting. And I forgot the the Ansible, um, Ansible modules. Um, so yeah, overall, uh, tough, tough time for me, to, a lot to be learned, um, but in the end, um, big success. And I'm, I'm confident that we can um, use this for, for years now and uh, improve stability and um, uh, yeah, let me close with that. So yeah, thanks for having me. Um, thanks for your attention. And I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. Thanks a lot, Manuel, for this great presentation. Are there any questions? Just uh, speak up. Uh, I think I have one. I hope it's not too loud. I'm sitting outside. Uh, thanks for the presentation. It was very nice. Um, I was wondering, how do you deploy the Slurm cluster? Uh, do you use Heat or using Ansible or your script is through the CLI or Terraform? Um, so we only have one HPC system and then there's, um, so what is a Slurm cluster? So we deploy um, virtual machines with a, um, so the virtual machine is provisioned with the Ansible playbooks and uh, we deploy um, say two Slurm controllers and the databases and the, um, the DBD, Slurm DBD servers. And um, so we provision the machines with Ansible, then we install all of the software packages with Ansible. And um, we, yeah, then, then start it up via system D with Ansible. And um, the same for the clients, we install the packages with Ansible and then start it with um, Slurm DBD. So we're not using any of the advanced um, things in OpenStack, but all of these things um, right now are um, deployed as stock, rocky images and then we install um, the software um, and as i said probably if we had like purpose built um, images it would have been um, possible to use heat to say okay i want to have two slurm controllers one mysql database um, two slurm dbd servers and then um, yeah i still would 
probably there's a, a, an easy way to bring the configuration to the servers, but we're not there yet. Okay, thanks. Because I mean, I think um, in the compute nodes, you use also Ansible to deploy them through Ironic, right? I guess. Yeah. Yes, precisely. They are. We we do deploy them with um, the uh, the Ansible uh, modules that are there, and um, yes, precisely. So so okay. it's. Okay, because we were also look. We are a similar journey. We are still using virtualized compute, but um, it is possible, I think, to deploy everything with a heat stack where you specify different flavors for bare metal and the VMs, and theoretically open. Or not only theoretically, but actually, the open stack will do the right thing and deploy the compute nodes on bare metal and the slurm controller and DVD on the VMs, and then you have one heat stack. At least that is uh, on our side, our plan that we want to try out. Yes, so um, if you, so one, one caveat that I would have is you can, with Slurm, you can upgrade, like make minor version upgrades by Okay, I mean, this this is very specific to Slurm now. Um, the the recommended way to install Slurm is not by building RPM packages, by but by um, building these um, by building the sources, installing it to opt and something version, and then having a link to the active version. So this is the way that we use for deploying it. And if you do this, you can install two Slurm versions um, at the same time and um, change the sim link, just restart the Slurm daemon, and then um, you have a Slurm cluster running the next version. And um, if you were to use um, heat, probably there's a feature to, to say do um, rolling um, reinstallations and these kind of things. Um, I don't know, but I, I'm certain it has because that's like how you do things in a cloud. But um, I don't know whether so how... Maybe, how, how maybe, much? How much you? How much you? How much you gain by using um, heat? But but still, it should be possible. Completely. Maybe possible. just to clarify, we wouldn't use heat to configure the software, just to get the basic mm. operating. Like you do it actually to get the basic operating system installed, and then actually use Ansible to install packages mm -hmm. and so on. Um, the advantage of using heat is that you can do uh, easily scale up and scale down, and you have one mm. stack to manage. So that was only our experience. Um, Yes, that's 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 of course nice, but then of course you have to be careful that you don't scale uh, down compute uh, nodes where with jobs running. But but still, yeah, that's if, true. If yes, probably. So we only have one HPC cluster. Probably, if I had to cater to two or more, that would be um, a, a pretty nice way to have some kind of elastic, growing and shrinking clusters. Um, yes, thanks. Thanks, Imid. Okay. Are there more questions? Yeah, I have a question. My name is Danish. Okay. I'm actually joining from Chennai, India. So I have a question here. Uh, when uh, the uh, host server machines, if their firmware need to be upgraded from time to time, um, various vendors uh, may release the firmware upgrades. So instead of uh, making the servers down, host machines down, whether Ionic provides any uh, methods to do it on live systems? Um, yeah, maybe to, I, I can repeat the question, but I don't know whether I can answer it. I'm not an Ironic um, expert. So you were asking whether you can um, have some kind of um, migration of the um, ironic deployed machine while the uh, no 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 not migration what i mean uh, periodically uh, the uh, manufacturers of these servers they may release uh, certain firmware upgrades uh, to the host machines the base servers uh, suppose you are going for hp or dell or any other kind of uh, mm -hmm. manufacturers they may release from time to time uh, some firmware upgrades to support uh, latest features or whatever maybe. So in those cases, uh, our client is asking what is the mechanism uh, to do periodic uh, firmware upgrades into that uh, servers without making it down. Uh, I can I can say how we are doing it. So yeah, if please. you have um, for the hosts where there's virtual machines, you can um, have a live migration of the virtual machines to other machines and then do a cycling reboot by this by um, like 
bringing all virtual machines to a, um, moving all virtual machines to another host and then rebooting the host and have the so our Dell iDRAC is configured to download all patches, but um, apply them only on the next reboot. So this is how we're doing it for the hosts and for the bare metal machines. Um, we're doing the same. It's just that we have, so Slurm can, um, Slurm can reboot a machine once all jobs are done. Oh, wait, I'll rather put it like this. There's no, the machine will accept no new jobs. And once all jobs are gone, um, Slurm or the operating system reboots, and when it comes back after, a, if, if it comes back, Slurm will um, bring, uh, yeah, uh, bring back the machine into the um, Slurm cluster. Um, okay, this. okay. So there is a downtime of that base machine. Essentially, is required. For in our deployment, it is, but um, by migrating off all virtual machines or having the Slurm cluster manager reboot the machine, it's not visible to users. Right, right. Agreed, agreed. And a second question I'm having uh, uh, this, there are various tools you specified here uh, Ansible, Kola, and Kyob. Mm -hmm. So, what's the selection criteria uh, <laughs> among this? <laughs> it may be funny, but I'm asking what's the selection criteria in your case? So I was looking um, to, I was I was looking for bare metal deployment uh, or things to. There were some issues we're having with with XCAT and we want to homogenize everything. And then I don't know how, how I got the idea to do this with um, OpenStack, but um, I thought okay, at some point I figured out okay, OpenStack can do these things, and um, okay. for, uh, there's a other say bare metal management systems out there i don't know the names and i saw okay at some point i thought okay um, OpenStack also looks to have the the biggest community which was then our decision to do that and then i found a video from some samsung engineers also from one of the um, OpenStack conferences from three years back or so and they um it's titled um, what options do we have do you have to install um, OpenStack on bare metal. And I think they cited Kyobi as um, um, one of the up and coming and Ansible based um, ways and also there's Triple O. And then I had a look and um, it turns out that uh, Kyobi is um, mainly developed by with from people from a company called uh, Stack HPC. And I thought, oh, it's HPC in their name. And then they had this wonderful block and it turns out they're friendly people and it's great software. And I know a bit of Ansible and that worked quite well for us. So this is, was the selection criteria. There was no feature metrics or so. It was a bit of research, a bit subjective and a bit of gut feeling. Uh, thank you, Manuel. Thank you very much for explaining to us in detail. And also, I would like to thank to uh, giving you such an opportunity by organizers. Uh, you want to have a fantastic session here. I would like to thank for giving an opportunity to join this session. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the question, Danish. Are there more questions? More, no more questions. No more questions from my side. Anyone else? If not, then thanks a lot again, Manuel. You're very welcome.